If you're a student of computing or computer science, you will have no doubt come across um, Boolean logic before. Uh, that's all about how you combine truth values, which are pairs of opposites, such as on or off, uh, sometimes represented as naught or one and tr or true and false. Um, and uh, if you haven't uh, seen this before, I'll include a link to this page in the description so you can have a, a look at this. So we've got the common um, Boolean operators, so and or exclusive or, sometimes that has an X at the start, and not. Um, so we can do things like um, this. So not only has one input, it's a unary operator, a bit like a negative sign in maths. That does the opposite. So in this case, if you switch the switch on, the bulb goes off. You switch the bulb off, um, uh, switch the switch off, the bulb comes on. So not reverses uh, the kind of sense of the switch. Notice that one and on are the same. That's not something a switch that I've made, that's just a standard switch that you might see in an electronics catalogue. Um, the other operators have two and most of the time the operators do what you'd expect um, kind of from everyday use of those words. So and for example the bulb only comes on if the left switch and the right switch is on. Um, so the left switch on its own does nothing, the right switch on its own does nothing but a combination of the left and the right switches the bulb on. And similarly, OR, um, with OR, um, the left switch works, operates the bulb, the right switch operates the bulb. So that again has a similar meaning to the everyday use of the word OR. The only thing is, um, in the everyday use of the word OR, we, we don't think that OR is going to mean both of them, but actually um, OR in this sense means one or the other or both. So if you don't want that, um, then what you might want is exclusive or. So exclusive or, as I said, sometimes begins with an X, um, is quite similar. Um, but what exclusive or means is one or the other, but not both. So uh, the left switch switches on the bulb, the right switch switches on the bulb. But if both are switched on, the light goes off again. So one or other, but not both. Or an alternative way to think about it, and sometimes this is a bit easier to think of is are the switches in the same position or are they in different positions so if the switches are in the same position the bulb is off so if they're both on the bulb is off or if they're both off the bulb is off if the switches are in different positions so left on right off then the bulb is on or the other way around so exclusive or is also a, a check of whether the the bits are um, different or the uh, the truth values are different um, and so that's that's the the main um, Boolean operators. You might also come across uh, ones beginning with N, where really the result is just the opposite. So if you come across a NAND, it's the the opposite of an AND. So zero and zero is um, off or zero. Um, zero NAND zero will be on. So it just reverses the sense of the output. So that's the kind of theory. Uh, can we use those in our programming? Well, we probably have done already. So if you um, use if for example you might often um, use something like this so you might say input um, so I don't know x equals int input give me a number and you want to check whether two conditions are true so if you want to check that the number is between uh, 0 and 10 for example you could say if x is greater than or equal to 0 and x is less than or equal to 10 then uh, print yes uh, correct range uh, otherwise print um, wrong range okay so now if I run this program it'll say give me a number and if it's in the right range if it's both greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 10 so and means both um, then it will say that's in the correct range and if I pick a number outside that range so if I go for minus 1 for example it will say oh I've run that again I didn't want to do that uh, it will say uh, wrong range okay so that's the, that's a, what we call a logical use of uh, boolean logic and or and we can also do uh, use not and we can use those over here so on the right hand side we can do things like um, we can say we can also use boolean values there's a separate video on true or false uh, which is quite interesting sometimes you can use those in quite imaginative ways so if I say um, true I can say true uh, is um, or, or I can say true and uh, false for example and that will give me the 
corresponding answer. So and only gives me a true answer if both of the inputs are true. So if I say true and uh, true, that will give me a true. Any other combination will give me a false. And similarly, if I say false uh, or true, uh, it will give me true. So I can use use these on directly on kind of truth values. They'll also work um, because um, false is really just a synonym for zero. Uh, so false and zero are the same, and true and one are the same according to Python. You can also do things like this. So you can say naught and uh, one, and it will give you a zero. So you can do it in either true or false way form, or you can do it in zero and one form. Um, but what you can also do uh, is, so rather than a logical use, um, you can uh, use uh, something called a bitwise uh, logic. So if we have a look at bitwise logic, and again, I'll put a link to this page in the description of the video. What it does is basically the same idea, but we take a binary representation of two numbers and uh, we compare them a bit at a time. So if I said um, I don't know, 123 and 27, what we do there is we, starting on the left, we compare them a digit at a time. Well, in fact, it doesn't matter which, which end you start. So zero and zero gives me zero. One and zero gives me zero. 1 and 0, etc. So a column at a time. Where there's two 1s, so in the 16s column, uh, the result will have a 1. And where there's two 8s, uh, there we go, we get the result also contains an 8. Um, so the result will depend on what the numbers are, but what we can use, we can use AND or an exclusive OR on um, numbers as well. So they use a slightly different technique for that. The, slight, the strange thing about Python is that if you use the word and, so if you said 123 and 27, it does give you an answer. And there, it actually gives you the same answer as I've got here. But where you might use this, and is particularly useful for masking bits. So if you're only interested in one particular bit of an answer, so you want to know whether a number is um, odd or even, for example, um, if you use um, a bitwise AND with 1, because for the, the uh, digit, for the column to contain a 1, it requires both um, digits to be 1. Um, the first seven bits in my number are never going to be uh, 1 in my answer, because um, the first seven bits of 1 are 0. So really it's just a way of masking off those first seven bits and looking at only the end bit. So what this tells us effectively is whether the number is odd or even. So if I put in, in, in an e odd number, um, the end bit isn't masked. If I put in an even number, um, well the end bit isn't masked but it's a zero. So the end bit is only a one for odd numbers. So that's, that's one way to use bitwise logic for example to determine whether um, a number is odd or even. You can also use it for um, binary flags. If you watch my binary video, uh, you might have seen this um, binary flags. So um, what we can do is if we number items using um, the binary column headings rather than one, two, three, four, it gives us an interesting property where if we add together the numbers, so if we want to, uh, if we add uh, science and English, for example, if we add 1 and 4, that combination of 5 can only be the combination of English and Maths. So if I put in here 5, it can split it back up into English and Science. And how this page works is using um, bitwise logic. So if I want to see if there's any science, what I do is I do a bitwise and with the number 4, and that sees whether the, the 4 column is used in the number. So if I've got 3, which is English and Maths, then that doesn't include science, so the result is 0. If I've got anything involving science, so science on its own, or indeed science and anything else, so 5, um, then we can use that to just ha inspect that single bit in the 4 column. So uh, 5 and 4 gives us 4. So if I go over here, 5 and 4 uh, gives us uh, 4. But if I do 4 and 5, that gives me 5. 
So actually we can see that although it appears sometimes to give us the correct answer, it doesn't, and that's because Python, uh, in common with some other languages, JavaScript is also the same in this respect, has different symbols for logical operators, logical and an or, and um, bitwise and an or. So if I want to do a bitwise and, what I actually need to do is use an ampersand character. So if I do for ampersand 5, that will do a bitwise and. And it, that in that case, it won't matter which way round I put the numbers. So I still get the right answer. If I want to do a bitwise or, uh, I use a, a pipe, which is on the left-hand side of the keyboard n between the Z and the Shift key if you're using a, a UK keyboard. So if I did uh, 5 or 4, um, that would give me 5. And it, again, it wouldn't matter which way round I did it. So 4 or 5 also gives me the answer 5. So we can use bitwise operations in our programming. That's quite useful for converting numbers to binary, for example, because what we can do is we can loop through the um, we can loop through the uh, binary column headings, for example. So we can say, take a, a deanery number, and we can say deanery number and one. That will tell us whether the first bit needs to be set. Deanery number and two. That will tell us whether the second bit uh, needs to be set. Deanery number and four, and so on. Um, that will tell us whether each of those bits are required in the number. Um, quite an interesting use is exclusive or. So we haven't looked at exclusive or, um, but there is uh, an operator for that. Now, interestingly, the operator for exclusive or is the same for logical and um, bitwise in Python. So we can do things like this. We can say true, and it's the up arrow, shift and six on a standard keyboard. So if we say that, uh, that gives us true. But we can also do things like this, so 123, exclusive or 27. So it works with numbers as well. And exclusive or it's got quite an interesting property in that if you do it twice, you end up back where you started. So 123 exclusive or uh, 27 gives us 96. If I then do 96 exclusive or um, 27, I get 123. So I get back to where I started. So you can use that for, as a quite an interesting uh, encryption technique. This was used in World War II by a German uh, encryption. Um, cipher called uh, Lorenz which was an early electronic device and it effectively did this sort of thing. It had a, had a, a representation of digits um, that represented the characters in the character set. So a bit like ASCII but not quite. Um, so this doesn't, doesn't do exactly the same thing as Lorenz but it does a similar kind of thing. So if we say we'll take some text and we'll say uh, input uh, give me text so again, if you were doing this as a project, you might include some sort of niceties. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for a key as well. So uh, this time it needs to be a number. So the number will need to be, in this case, between 0 and 255. So again, if I was doing this as a project, uh, I would apply some sort of validation. But um, that's not key to the particular uh, demonstration we're doing now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through. So I'm going to say for char in text, so for each character, in the text that we've entered, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take that character and I'm going to add it to uh, my output string. So what I need first is uh, a blank output string. So each time we process a character, I'm going to add the result to my output string. And what I'm going to add is I'm going to take the character and I'm going to find using the ASCII code, and there's a separate video on this if you're not sure. Um, I'm gonna, so ORD finds me the ASCII code, so if it was capital A, it'd be 65, for example. And then I'm going to exclusive all that with the key, and then I'm going to turn that back into a symbol uh, using CHR. So CHR turns uh, the ASCII code back into the character. So I'm gonna exclusive all the code for each character with my key, and then add that to the string, and then I'm going to output that. So I've dispensed with all the niceties, but I've just shown you the key bits here. So it's going to say, give me some text. So if I say hello, and uh, give a key, which is a number, so let's say 123. And what it's done there is it's uh, 
printed nothing. So let's, uh, what's wrong with that? So let's try that again. There we go. So it might be the case that once I'd done an exclusive or with 123, what resulted was a character that Python couldn't actually display in the panel on the right there. Um, so what I've got there is I've got an encrypted version of that. Um, so it's, it's a substitution cipher because both of the L's become W's. Uh, but the interesting thing about this is if I run that again and I type in what I got out, S um, tilde WWT, and I use the same key, I get my original message out. So it's a nice reversible um, cipher. So that's a quick look at what Boolean logic is and um, also the idea that we can apply Boolean logic uh, a digit at a time to binary numbers and that's called bitwise logic and Python allows us to do both of those. We can use the, um, the operators AND and OR for logical operations and if we want to do bitwise AND and OR we use the ampersand and the pipe symbol uh, but actually both uh, logical and bitwise exclusive or use the um, the hat symbol which is shift and six.